So, um, if as far as the instrument section has go, the only thing we have the we have the sampler which has changed a bit, and then we have polysynth which has changed quite a bit, and then uh, all the other native instrument native Bitwig plugins have not changed like slightly. They're the exact same, just they have the new Bitwig textures on them. Um, so here. We have our polysynth, LFO things have been taken away, a few, quite a few things have been taken away, again, because we have this new modulation thing that basically does everything you could ever want for any modulation purposes. And in case you were also wondering, you can take a serum and do all Bitwig native modulations to the serum, no problem, envelope-wise. Come in here, touch it, it's right there, click, touch, click, like, anything you want, you can search for it. This is like some pretty intense modulation abilities uh, for DAW, my opinion. So we have this new thing, oscillator blend mode is new. And then we have, well, at least for me, I've never ever seen that before. And then we have uh, some things have been moved around. So like the, the glide, for example, is over here now. It's not, and it's called glide, not porta. Then we have a feedback option, which I believe is new. Uh, and then we have this and we have new symbols so if you don't know what this is this is basically just like a left or right like this is like a left or right so it's describing the movement of a frequency same thing here with the os oscillator fm is it's describing it on a spectrum point of view and then we have this usually stands for resonance resonance and then we have new things here like soft um sign like all this kind of stuff i don't know what that's for and then this means key tracking, and then this is like effectiveness, I guess. And then we have curves now as well. Uh, so we have two two attacks, two decays, two sustains, two releases. One's just for like general modulation, and then the other one is for uh, oscillation. Like the bottom one is for oscillation volume, and then this one is not hooked up to anything. Uh, so yes. And then... Uh, unison all the stuff we have a new i think we have a new width knob i don't know if this was a thing before and we have uh, oscillator pannings all this stuff is the same sub like pw it's cool we uh the width change starting points I believe this will work on will it work on anything or is it just for the sub? So it only works for the sub the subsection, which happens to be square. Because of analog purposes. Aha. Uh -huh. So now we have this. These different options, you can read them. See what they do. Linear mix. Linear mix with oscillator two negated for phase cancellation. Up from oscillator one, down from oscillator two, mix equals split. Um yeah, so most plugins use mix, which basically means if it gets too loud, it's going to act in a linear way where it quiets down things. It starts to average frequencies, and then you don't hear, like, the individual sounds as much. So you would have to use max, so then that way nothing is blended and it just stays, and it's not linear, mixed, or anything like that. Um, yeah, so this is what Polysynth looks like. No difference. Oh my gosh, and then we have so many of these plugins. So, on the we have audio receiver, looks a little different. 8 bit, new graph, still same functions. Blur, uh, same exact functions, except now we have like the things uh, graphed to this. So, if I move this up, it moves like like this. It's like an XY graph now, and then we have like this the millisecond delay up here instead so it's a little friendlier and nicer to use for modulation if you want to record automation now it's like much easier because you don't it controls two things for you at once three things uh we have chorus this has a new little thing so basically it just shows you like how your current setup is going to react um so we'll do this one here so like how is this going to work and you turn it to a triangle if you want and then this is going to show you how it's going to perform the phasing essentially based on the settings you've picked um is it going to be lined up or not or is it going to be like dead center at a phase like that um and then like how much to an amount or is there going to be like none or whatever 
and then stereo width, but this graph just for fun. And then we've got comb. Now we have X, Y, so we have like res resonance or feedback up here, and then we have like what area it's going to target. Yep. Compressor, the same. Only thing we've done is added this little bar now. So you can see what you're doing in terms of meters, like uh, if you have this here. Chances are it's not compressing. Put it there, now it is. And if you go where this orange is, that's where the peaking is. And now you can charge it, tar target peaks, or you can just go way down, up to you. DSer, same, just looks little bars, just like more compact and everything's a little fatter. The delays are all the exact same. Distortion. of interesting now. Kind of like that. So it has a nice little feel to it now. Much more friendly, in my opinion, than the previous one that was just some knobs. Has a really nice bitwig feel to it now. Um, dual pan. This is another kind of complicated topic. When you pan something in a panner like this, I'm moving the sound source left to right, so I'm changing where the sound is coming from. Uh, all this does is it changes like the actual left and right information. So when I do this, it's all it's done is lowered my right headphone, and you might be like, "Oh, well, then you've changed the sound location, and now it's actually on the left side." Well, no, it's not. Um, this is like the default panner in Logic and it's actually like super annoying because it's not proper panning. You can't use this to actually dictate locations of instruments in rooms and correctly pan. This is just like a phasing and like trick. This is basically like a phasing and volume trick at this point. This isn't like actual, actually moving the sound source. It's, it's changing how you perceive the sound source, which is a big difference. Uh, so remember that. And then dynamics, the same. Uh, again, we just have this, those new compressor bars here on the side. And then we have EQ2, just graph. Graph. DJ2 looks a little different, just graphs. Um, filter. If you want to, I, I, I often like to modulate like both of these at the same time, so this is nice. You hook, hook these up to Mac doors or modulations, get some pretty interesting results. And then again, the pre starts at like negative six all the time, and then you always have like what, like some sort of resonance, like somewhere around like 60, and then it starts like over here. So then what I've done is took off resonance, stop pre, saved as new default. Save this default press preset, and then it's open. So every time I oh, every time I load, oops, this. After I've messed around with it and done like silly things, and then I load my default. Load the default. It's not working. Probably because I still have it in browser mode, but like it, it does what I want, which is nice. And then flanger little different looking see what i've liked is they've kind of like suggestively enlarged the most important knobs to be like oh try this to kind of give you a little bit of direction when you're using things now which is nice frequency shifter we always had that uh we have these new analog geek plugins so get excited for that we have ladder still the same <laughs> Oscilloscope, I believe this is a new. You can close that if you want, so that's that's cool. Peak limiter, exact same. Phaser, new. Built-in LFO, you can take this off. It's just showing you that you can modulate. Now it doesn't move. Yep. 
you have a low end ignore. So it doesn't go after the low ends as much, and then when you drag this down, it's like all over them low ends, making all the mud. Thirty-two pulls. Coolest thing ever. Check this out. You can now make a center, left, and right pulling. To make things super stereo. That's so cool. Pitch shifter. New. This is new, I believe. Cool sounds come from that, obviously. And scroll, 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 scroll. Replacer. Still have no clue what this does. Residence bank. Oh, God. Quick key track on. Cool effects for drums. Pretty, pretty cool. Reverb. This blew my mind because like the only other reverb plugin I know of that actually has like a before and after spectrum of the reverb would be FabFilter Pro R and that's like brand new. So that's super cool. This is the exact same in functionality again. Uh, knobs of bigger importance are a little suggestively bigger, like more uh like that and then we have the buttons have you can now see all the options instead of before where you just had a bar like a little thing a text thing it just said room and you just dragged it and it would switch the hole uh now you actually have a button for it which is really nice ring mod rotary so they sound like in case you didn't know this is new and if someone's gonna ask me like oh how's the spectrum of bitwig like how does, um, is it accurate? Uh, yeah, totally. Like, you could actually use the Spectrum Analyzer easy. And it's somewhat comparable to, like, the PAS Analyzer from Waves in terms of, like, actual relevance. So, I, 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 view, I used it actually to mess around and, like, master uh, a song. And I was pretty pleased with the results. I did, like, the, uh, the using the Bitwig EQ and Spectrum Analyzer. Uh, and mid side and doing EQs like that, I essentially got to the same place that I would have went with, uh, like say Fab Filter Pro Q. So that's cool. Step mod. This is still like an actual device, just in case. Um, but then there's still the modulator option as well. That's not Bitwig. Good old test tone. If you don't know what this is for, this is essentially for um either tuning or what they use this for is to check the frequency response of of uh speakers for example i can i can hear 19.5k hertz and my headphones cut out around here so um so they can test your your actual range I think if they cut out right around here. I can hear this. The accuracy though is probably really bad. And then I uh, use that, what is it? The When they go into, for example, I went to sell like a very expensive pair of speakers when I moved to Finland and they quickly plugged it into like an AI that basically was only a test oscillator and they just like, ran through the frequencies back and forth from like zero to 50 to see what it was catching to make sure it was actually displaying the full range with no clicks and cracks so that was for tool uh exact same transient exact same tree monster brand new tremolo i'm just kidding let's go to tree monster this has really 
weird things. I really like Tree Monster. I'm going to use this all the time now. Sometimes it de-pitches, but that's okay. <laughs> that's the thing, though. It's a, it's a special type of reactive ring modulator. And then that is it. Then we have XY effect here. So that's that's all there is here. What's this? Oh, okay. Oh, so this is like that four quadrant thing, essentially. Okay, cool. Good. Yeah, that's that's it. I'm probably going to split these videos up into three sections. One where I just quickly talk about new features unrelated to the devices. And then, then I'll do the modulator separately. And then I'll do these devices separately. And uh, then everyone will know everything they need to know about Bitwig. It's Bitwig's beta. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. Peace.